this is Costa Kev. Costa's creating sustainability. I've put a tank in. The question is, why here? Why this size? And why um, have a tank at all? If you're doing residential, you've actually got to have a house design and um, put in 100 trees before you can get permission to get town water. So we're forced to have tank water or another form. And if I put the tank down there where the future roof is, possibly going to be, then I've got no means of actually filling it up from the roof till then. So I'm putting a 10 ton tank in here. And the reason it's um, 10 ton is that's the biggest tank that can be fitted on a, on a boat to get over here. Or I put in cement, can't do that without permission. Or I put a well in, can't do that without permission. So I'm stuck. I actually have to get water in. The 10 ton, well, 20 ton of water costs 70 euros. So it's not too expensive, but that 20 ton of water can be done 10 at a time. How much water do I need? One tree needs two ton of water. I'm gonna put in right now 150 trees. So I'm looking at having to fill this thing up in summer twice a week. So the tank is going in this high position. This is the front of my block. So even when the water level is down to about a foot, I can still water from the very top to the very bottom of my property. Okay, we have water. Day seven. I've got a water tank. It's filled. Uh, I've got ten ton of water. No leak so far. Um, but I've been looking at that tank, and I rested on it. It was hot. I'm thinking, gee, you imagine that free energy, that free heat. If in winter time, and that or another one is next to my house, and I can have doors that close and open facing south in this case, or north in Australia. Um, to the sun where you put insulated reflective um, foil on the inside of the door so you can open it, reflect all the sun's heat onto the barrel, heat the barrel and use that heat somehow to warm your house. I'm going to think about that one a little bit. He had an extra three ton in his truck he wanted to dump. Beauty. <laughs> uh, so we put it in the swale. And this is what passive slowing and soaking looks like. It just creeps its way along. Because it's all basically flat. This part has a slight incline. But from here all around is flat. So, you know, the water is just going to slowly seep across and then lift it doesn't move it doesn't flow doesn't run it just slowly seeps across and then lifts and my catchment is this area the top paddock the entire top road going up to that hill but the bottom part of the block that bottom section where the pond is or the wetland is but the whole hillside there is the catchment most of the water dumps down there and a small portion of it comes down the road and I'm channeling it down here, down this road, onto this green stuff, onto this flat area which I'm going to now um, cover with seed. And I've got that mound around here, just this extra mound, so if there is in fact a flow of water, it doesn't, uh, doesn't knock out my swale. That way I've got an extra mound of protection there. a nice fit around
I don't think I'll do it up too tight for now. Listen to this. That's water running down from the tank down the black pipe which runs down there and then up from the black pipe up in here in around this one up in around it's on my handle so this little puppy is three years old What are you? Some kind of fancy caterpillar. You are. Day seven, I pegged the swale every three meters. And what it is, is a large peg, a small peg, a small peg, a large peg. The large ones indicate where I want to put the uh, pioneer trees. They're the ones that are going in this year. And they're all around the swale. 